What's up guys, I'm BigWorm380 and today we're going to talk a little PUBG, specifically the Xbox One version. The player test server just came back and they have some interesting things including this latest update. I'm going to take you through some of the patch notes so you can see exactly what's coming in the next live server update. So sit back, strap in, this is the Access Show. So let's dive right into these notes and see what they added. If you've ever gone for a headshot or even a body shot and wondered why the person didn't go down like you expected, it's possible that they turned, jumped, or moved in a way that put their arm in front of where you were trying to shoot. This would result in the bullet hitting their arm and them taking minimal damage because the more vulnerable part never even got hit. Inner limb penetration. You can see in this graphic that with this update, bullets will now continue through the arm and also hit whatever's on the other side. So if an arm's blocking a player's head, you'll now get the damage for the arm hit and the full headshot damage. This will be nice because if it works correctly, there should be no question as far as the damage you deal to somebody if you hit if you hit your mark. Keep in mind, though, it works both ways, so you can be on the receiving end of this, and you may notice that you seem to die more easily. I don't think it's going to change the gameplay very much, though, because I've personally never taken a shot, especially at any kind of distance, and said, oh, no, I hit his arm and not his head. You either hit or you don't. This seems to me like it'll it'll affect body shots more than anything, and I like it because it'll increase your chances of winning a gunfight if you get the drop on somebody versus you shooting them and then them spinning around on you. I mean, you're going to get hits when you should get hits, no matter where you hit them. Just adds a little more realism, and, and it removes the variable of did I hit his arm or did I hit his head or his chest or whatever. You're going to get the shot you want. One thing to note here is it says forearm penetration is disabled for shotguns. I assume this is because shotties are already pretty powerful and this penetration would make them even more so. Okay, so let's move on to the user interface improvements. I'm not going to go through every bullet point here on these, so feel free to pause and read them. I'm just going to go over what I think are the main additions. So here they're talking about improvements to uh, attachment management. It says weapon attachment management uh, when placing items has been improved. Removed or replaced attachments will now drop onto the floor if there's no room in your inventory. When attaching directly from loot, the replaced attachment will be dropped on the floor if there's no room in your inventory. When replacing an extended magazine with a quick draw magazine, the extended magazine and overflow ammunition will be dropped onto the floor if there's no room in your inventory. So basically, they've made it more efficient when you're swapping attachments and you have a full inventory. So you don't have to physically go in to your inventory and remove and drop attachments to make room for the new one. You just grab the new one from the floor, put it on the weapon you want, and boom, it throws the old one away on the floor for you. It's a small thing, but the seconds it takes to do it the old way could very well be all the time somebody needs to get the drop on you and you're dead. They've also added some more features for colorblind settings. Uh, this is good. More accessibility means more players, and, and that's always a good thing for any game. Also with this patch comes a bunch of performance improvements. Um, again, I'm not going to go through all these. Uh, you know, smoke and flames from vehicles have been optimized for to improve frame rate. They've, they're improving the server performance by adjusting replication rate, which is, I'm not really sure. Um, it's, it's how characters in visible sight were refreshed every frame, you know, yada, yada, yada. Network code's been adjusted. Uh, they've optimized CPU and GPU performance uh, to improve performance. Uh, what else? Uh, optimized fog to increase performance. Previously, two separate fog effects were used for the overall effect. Now they've been merged together to improve performance. So it looks like, you know, they, they, keep, they keep optimizing stuff, and, uh, you know, that's good because we want to get that frame, frames per second up and just, you know, the overall performance. Server performance, too, that's a big deal. Um, net code's always been an issue, especially on, on PC. A lot of people complain about net code, and that gets to, you know, the desync issues and hit detection and stuff like that, which, being this is a Battle Royale shooter, that's pretty important. So all these performance upgrades are great. I know when I played on the test server, the game ran real smooth, so they seem to be doing a good job optimizing. Now, I'm playing on an Xbox One X, though, and I wonder how much these optimizations are helping the original Xbox performance-wise. If you've seen any of my other PUBG videos on my channel, you'll know that that's something that I always bring up because it's just not fair for an Xbox One X user to have an advantage over an original Xbox one user it's one thing for the original xbox to maybe have a little less quality graphics wise but when you're talking about buildings rendering in and you're having to wait 20 seconds or more to enter a building while xbox one x players are already in and looting 
that's not going to work. That's something they have to fix. So if you have an original Xbox and you've tried this test server, let me know in the comments how the performance is. So all this talk about performance improvements leads right into the next new feature that they added. If you saw Jade's video last weekend about PUBG, you know about the fixed PUBG program they started and how it kind of looked like they weren't focusing much on the Xbox version when they showed the, the, the bug, you know, the known bugs and stuff they're working on because there was a ton of stuff on PC, but there was very little at all on the Xbox one. So Xbox players have kind of been feeling like they're left out a little when it comes to updates because like most games, the PC version of PUBG seems to get all the love and the update sooner. Well, part of this test server update includes something that I was thinking might not ever make it to the Xbox, and that's dynamic weather. The patch notes say that Erangel has the overcast setting and Miramar has the overcast and a sunset setting. The overcast setting is the main one because it's the one that has the actual dynamic weather, which is the rain and the fog. Not only was I surprised to see the weather when I played on the test server, I was happy to notice it didn't seem to affect the performance any when, when it was happening, which is a big surprise. This is a big deal for the Xbox because they had to remove dynamic weather from PC months ago when they first brought it out due to performance problems, and it was just reintroduced to the PC in the latest update two weeks ago. So with the inclusion of dynamic weather, it seems like Blue Hole is actually trying to close the parity gap between PC and Xbox, and that's a good thing because it shows they're definitely working to improve the Xbox version, and they're going to have to do that if they want to keep players around for when the Xbox version finally comes out of preview. Now, there's also some additions to the map itself. You can see here that they've added small clusters of houses in different areas across Erangel. I like this because, for one thing, you have more opportunities to find loot, and also these houses break up some of the big wide open areas and give you more cover. And they've also added what they call tactical landscapes near the river side of the military base island. They added more rock areas and added some trees, which again, that's nice to have more cover, especially if you come across the river by boat. It's a really bad feeling when you come ashore and it's just wide open all around you. And finally, here is the list of bug fixes included in the test server. Again, I'm not going to go over every one of them on the list. You can, you know, pause and read if you like. Uh, I do like the first one. Uh, finally, our settings will stay even if there's an update. So uh, I know for me personally, it was real annoying because I changed sensitivity settings and I invert, you know, my Y axis and, you know, just a couple other things. And it seems like almost every time you log in, you had to do it. And especially after updates, that was a given. So um, it's going to be nice not having to do that all the time. They're actually going to save that. That's kind of one of the things that, you know, of all the things wrong with this game, that's one of the ones that you would have thought they would have fixed a long time ago. But it's fixed now. So uh, one of the things that they did fix that's not on this list was the bug that was affecting the uh, B-type control scheme. Uh, the patch notes... They did have a patch note for the hot fix, but it was just just the fix for this one bug. Um, it was the the patch note said that it was affecting A and B. I don't know. All I know is that people were complaining about the B type control scheme, and I experienced it myself. Um, this is when you would aim down the sight, hold your left trigger, and aim down the sight, and then you would let off of it. Your character sensitivity, like your look speed and everything, would be real low compared to what your settings were. So all you had to do was hit the LB shoulder button and it would fix it. But it was just really annoying that you even had to do that, you know. Um, but, I'm, but either way, I'm glad they went ahead and did a hot fix for that because, like I said, a lot of people were complaining about that. So that's the player test server update. What do you guys think? Is Blue Hole doing enough to get the Xbox ready for full release? How's the original Xbox performing on the test server? Let me know in the comments. But that's going to do it for this one. As always, don't forget to subscribe to Jade Plays Games for all your gaming news. And if you want, go check out my channel, Big Worm 380 Gaming. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Access Show, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.